Hi, this is Ed. Several of my friends and YouTubers have inquired about this rack that I put mowers and small tractors and such on. Uh, it will hold about a thousand pounds, maybe a little more than that, but safely a thousand pounds. Uh, I'm going to show you different features about it. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, I already had the ramps and some of the hardware, uh, but wood-wise and uh, some other small features, uh, about $120 maybe. Uh, I've got a winch here, that was about $35. Bought the ramps on sale for about $39 from Harbor Freight. Um, so, you know, under $200 uh, probably I've got in this and it's worth its weight in gold because uh, I'm no longer working on the ground all the time. It's a very comfortable height where it's at. I can get underneath, I can get up uh, into the engine area with no problems. Uh, I can back on a tractor rather than uh, bring it on by the front, whatever I need to do. So I'm going to show you a few features about it and how it's put together and uh, hopefully it'll inspire you if you want to make something like this yourself and of course you'll make your changes which you feel is appropriate um, but it, it is worth its weight in gold. So uh, expect a little shakiness in the camera because at times I'll be using it uh, by hand rather than having it stationary. So anyway let's get started. So let's start from the rear. So here we have the ramps, Harbor Freight ramps. Uh, you probably can't see it, but there's a bolt at the end here sticking out and it falls into a hole and it holds the ramps in place so that they don't shift while you're loading or unloading a garden tractor. Now here are wheel stops and they can go in different places. Again, there's a long bolt that goes into a hole, locks it into place, multiple places, it can even go down the ramp. So I can find just the right position of where I want the tractor on this rack. Now up here, I've got a cable hooked to a winch with a hook and that cable and hook will go out to a waiting tractor that needs to go up onto the rack and I will use the winch which I'll show you in a few minutes I'll use the winch to pull it up onto the rack I don't drive it up I've learned over the years that things can happen so I don't do that anymore now these cross members are super important for the side to side motion. Uh, they lock it into place making it very sturdy. Uh, it doesn't move at all. It's, it's very very safe. For me anyway I found it to be very safe. Being up underneath you notice that it's dirt underneath. So I've got a couple pieces of light flexible plywood. It's only about 3 16 Luan. It's really interior plywood. But when I'm not using it, I store it away in a nice dry place. But it provides a, a nice, smooth, safe area. I don't hurt my back or anything by laying on a rock or anything like that. And uh, I can sit out the underneath there in a clean area and uh, do the work I need to do. Now these are cross members that uh, can go in multiple places, just wherever I want to put them and what they're for is if I need to lift the tractor I can put a jack on these and lift the, the tractor up wherever I need to do it and of course uh, there's a slight angle because of the way the the rack is so a, a piece of plywood small thin piece of plywood on one side uh, will uh, straighten up the jack so you can lift straight up and down Now here's the winch. This is a Harbor Freight winch. This is a one ton straight uh, pull lift. In other words, it'll pull a full ton straight without any pulleys or anything. 
Uh, I do have one pulley in the mix. I've got it hooked up to a drill uh, so I don't have to do the cranking thing and uh, it'll pull the tractor all the way up onto the lift and I use it to take the tractor off as well. Now here you see these hinges. These are big uh, gate hinges or barn door hinges. Uh, pretty hefty and uh, they're the front piece. Now these here I didn't mention at the beginning. These are trailer tongue lift jacks and uh, I installed them thinking that I wanted this thing to pivot up and down. But I really haven't had a need for this, and uh, I'm thinking of taking those off. So I didn't include that in the money when I gave, told you about $200. It, you'd be adding about another $100, $50 a piece, one for each side, if you did that. But it uh, would lift the, the rear. The rear posts are not embedded into the ground. They just sit on top of the ground. Now underneath, uh, this is what you see. There's the, the hinge there towards the front, and then you see these small pieces of uh, two by four and uh, the bolts and what this is for is to have a clamping action to draw everything together nice and tight and snug so that it's not loose. Uh, there are several screws running along the two by four and the two by six on the outside but that's not strong enough. You need to have this uh, set up where you can clamp it and uh, really make it strong and secure. Now here's something that you need to take note of. Those blocks are there for safety purposes. Just in case one of those hinges should break, they would help support uh, the, the uh, uh, rack so that it didn't fall on me if I was underneath. Rear posts, again, mentioned that they're just sitting on top of the ground. They're not embedded into the ground. The front posts are, and we'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. So some measurements. There's the front post. Now that's about a foot into the ground embedded into concrete. Hopefully you can see these measurements. Now I'm six foot and this is just about right for me to get underneath and sit up. Uh, if you're, say, 6'2 or bigger, I would definitely put a couple inches on this thing so that you've got a little room uh, height-wise in the front. Now the width is such that I can get a full-size lawn tracker, one of the heavier, bigger ones on there like the Craftsman or the uh, Husqvarna or uh, John Deere, but the... Um, Smaller ones will also work, the, the lawn tractors now, not just the little, little riding lawnmowers. Now here you see I've got 2x6, two 2x6, six, two six, and a 2x4 all joined together. Rear post and the height overall. The length just use the uh, 8 foot length that the boards came and uh, the ones I needed to trim back I, I cut a little bit shorter but the, the, the main one where you come up on that's a full, full length 8 foot board this one where I come and join in with my cross member it's a little bit shorter And there you have it. So stop the video any place you want to look in closer and go back and see. Take it for whatever it is. Uh, I hope it inspires you. I hope you like what you see. Maybe uh, uh, you can build one of your, your own. Uh, please click the like button and I hope that you'll subscribe. Thank you so much.